Hi guys, welcome to Shogi 101. Today I would like to show you how can you play Japanese chess, as we call Shogi. And I will be doing this tutorial using two types of pieces. One which is the original one, the kanji, the Chinese characters used in Japanese writing. And we will also use international set made by Hidechi. So short introduction to Shogi. Shogi is a game originated in Japan. The most interesting rule in Shogi is that taken pieces can come back to the board, and therefore there are not many draws. Shogi is a game that has the same roots as chess, which means the objective of the game will be to capture the king. Shogi is also deeply rooted in Japanese culture. There is a professional world system where the top pros are competing for titles that have many hundreds of years history, and usually games are played in tatami rooms uh, while sitting in Japanese it's Seiza. So how do you play Shogi? As you can see the piece has this kind of shape with this kind of arrow on the top. If this arrow is facing upward it means this is your piece. If the piece is facing downward like this, this is your opponent piece. So all those pieces on the bottom will be your pieces and all the pieces on the top will be opponent's pieces. This is the initial position. There is eight type of pieces. Let's start with the most important king. And here we have the international version and the Japanese one. So the king moves like this in a kind of circle because the Japanese kanji for the king means a circle. The international king looks like a chess king. So if you're a chess player, you will find it familiar with the chess king. And if you would like to remember the kanji, you can think of a flag, like the upper line, the lower line, and the two lines in the middle, maybe it's a cross. And then if you add two more lines, you have a flag. So this would be the common part of both kings, and it's maybe easier to remember this way. So when you choose to move the king, you can choose one of those squares to move onto. Remember, the objective of the game is to take the opponent's king and to not let our king be taken before that happens. So next we have the strongest piece, which is the rook. The kanji for the rook means to fly. And if you know chess, you will know that rook moves horizontally and vertically as far as it can. Unless there is some piece on the way, you cannot jump on top of it. By the way, if it's an opponent piece, it means you can take it. If it's your piece, you cannot go there as well. The kanji for the rook, I remember by looking at two things. One which are those kind of wings things, because as I said, rook means, the kanji for the rook means to fly, or because the rook chest looks like this, and it's like a very tall tower, you can look at this line to imagine the tall tower. This is the international look, it looks exactly like a chess piece, and it moves exactly the same. Next we have a bishop, bishop moves diagonally. The kanji for the bishop also means something similar. It actually means angle. So by angle, it means that you go on the angles of the squares. The kanji for bishop looks like this. And there is few funny ways to remember. One, because it's angle mover. The full Japanese name is angle mover. You can imagine that it has two feet. You can also concentrate on the fact that it has a window in the middle. And I always find it funny that it has this type of tiny head on the top. So choose your favorite way to remember it. This is the international version of bishop. It looks exactly like the chess bishop. Rook and bishop are our two strongest long-range pieces. Both of the players will have only one of each. You will have your bishop on the left side and the rook on the right side and the opponent will have bishop on the opposite side and the rook also. Basically the rook is on his right side and the bishop is on his left side. 
the king is in the middle. And this is the international bishop, rook, king. Now let's meet weird pieces that are in shogi. Those are called generals. We have only two types of generals. This is called gold general. The kanji for gold actually means money or gold in Japanese. If you ever heard anything about Japan, <laughs> it's a way to remember it. It, does, it has no connection at all, but there is like this golden temple in Kyoto. So you can imagine that there is a roof of the temple here and it's golden and there's maybe some pillar underneath. So gold has a weird way of moving and the international piece shows it very easily. You can see those things pointing out. This is exactly how gold general moves. If you compare the movement to the king, the gold general cannot move here. So maybe it's easier to remember if you think of the king. The other way to remember is, remember the temple? Or if you think of a roof, you think of a house. So if you think what grows next to a house, that would be a tree, right? So if you use your imagination, you can imagine there is a tree over here. And this is how I remembered the gold movement in the beginning. So let's go to our second general, which is silver general. What a surprise. And silver general, I would like you to think of uh, as him as a younger brother of gold general. If you look in the kanji, Remember the house? This was the house. So the same part of the kanji is here. So this is why he's a brother. He has half. He's like, he has the same blood as the gold general. And if you look on the right side, there is this kind of weird thing. But use your imagination. Next to the house, there is a letter R. And how it's cool, the cool way to remember is to remember that the R on the right side of the kanji is the same R as silver. So how does a silver move? This international one shows us again very easily. So it moves in a kind of way like you would draw a star. So if you think of a silver star, maybe it's easier to remember. The other way to remember the movement of the silver is maybe like a human with hands pointing out and down. If you have analytic type of mind, you can think of silver general as X that goes forward and the gold general will be a plus that goes, well, everywhere forward. So you can notice, yeah, both generals can move everywhere forward. The weaknesses though are a little bit different, so be careful of that. Silver General is the aggressive brother because he's used in the attack and the Gold General will be more used to defense because he cannot back up easily. Alright, going on. Here we have the craziest piece in Shogi. It's called a knight, the same as in chess. But different from a knight, you can notice that he has this eye blinder. And that's because he's only looking forward. The knight will move exactly like in chess, but only forward. So here and here. How do you remember the knight movement? You can count. You can go one, you can go two, and then you choose whenever you go left or right. So he kind of jumps. It's, it's a weird movement. I say that knights are always drunk because they jump all around. But yeah, be careful because he cannot go back, he cannot go sideways. So if you've moved too far, he will be easily captured. The kanji for knight, my way of remembering it, it actually means acacia, which is kind of a bush. So you can think of this as a bush, but there is a funnier way to remember. You can think of this as a human that has a sword, and this is his shield because he's a knight. And he has those crosses again. Knight and lance. This is a lance. They both are what we call light pieces. Uh, they are quite weak pieces. This lance is kind of spear, so if you think of like when you strike with your spear, you strike forward, and this is exactly how a lance moves. So when you strike the spear, it gets stuck, you cannot go back. The lance goes only forward. 
okay, onto any square it wants. It can stop here, it can stop here, it can stop here. The kanji for lens, it means actually incense or like perfume. Uh, so if you think of incense, you can think of it like being on fire. The other cool way is to remember it, it together with the movement. So if you connect those two lines, you connect the bottom, you have an arrow. So yeah, lens goes only forward. Finally, we have the pawn, the smallest piece that we actually have the most of. The pawn looks the same as in chess. It moves very similar, it moves only one forward. But be careful, it also takes the same way as it moves. It doesn't take diagonally as in chess. The Japanese kanji for pawn looks like this. And the way I remembered it was by imagining a smiley face. And I was a smiling farmer, possibly with a head on the top. So yeah, remember that pawn takes as it moves. Should I be explaining quickly about the piece value? The king's value will be, of course, infinite. You don't want it to be taken. The rook and the bishop will be the strongest pieces, which uh, their value will be quite similar to each other. Then two generals, gold, silver, it will be half as strong as the rook, and then lance and knight will be half as strong as generals, and finally three pawns will equal one lance. So generally you want to take one of the big pieces. I will show the same thing on the international set. The rook, the bishop are the most strong pieces after king, that's value is infinite. Gold, silver, same value, half of value of the rook, knight, lance, same value, half of the value of this general, and pawn, three pawns equal lens. Okay, now I'll be talking about a rule called drop rule. This is a very important rule in Shogi. Uh, what it actually means. If you take opponent's piece, like this rook, can go forward, so if we move it over the opponent's lance, it means that lance you pick up from the board and you put it here on the, your right side of the board. This place is called a piece stand. This is where the captured pieces are coming. If your opponent captures a piece, it goes to his piece stand over there. As you put the piece here, you put it upside down because that piece now belongs to you. So as the piece comes here, it becomes yours. So when can you use it? Shogi is a turn-based game, so it means after you've made a move, now it's your opponent's turn, he will make a move. And again, your turn comes, you have two options. One, move a piece on the board, or two, drop a piece. You always have those options as long as you have pieces on the piece stand. So let's say you want to drop the lens you just got. Where can you drop it? You can drop it on any open squares, like here. And as you can see, you cannot put it on top of your rook, because it's already there, and you wouldn't be able to put it on the top of your opponent's pieces. Now, we've learned that there are three pieces that move only forward, which is the knight, lens, and pawn. So there is a special rule for knight, lens, pawn drop. You cannot drop them on this row, because if you drop the lens here, it has no movement, right? The same applies to pawn. In the knight, as we learned, it jumps to squares, like one, two, three. So it will mean that the knight, you cannot also drop on those squares. All right? The same applies to your opponent. He will have to be careful about drops on those squares. One more thing, the piece stand is also something we call uh, pieces in hand. So for example, if you will have rook in hand, in general situations you want to drop it right to the opponent's camp to be as close as you can be to the opponent's king. This rule leads to a beautiful checkmate sequences where you keep dropping pieces while checking the king and leading to final checkmate. This kind of sequence we will call Tsume. You don't have to remember it now, but Shogi has a lot of those cool ending sequences. 
All right, so here we go to the second very important Shogi rule, promotion. So as you see, the initial position, you can uh, visually see that each of the sides have somewhat camp. This, those three rows we call the promotion zone. This will be your promotion zone in the opponent's camp. And the one on the bottom will be the enemy's, the enemy's promotion zone. What does it mean? So let's say you move the pound forward. He will also move the pound forward. You will move pound forward. He will move the pound forward. You know, play turn by turn. And finally, as your pawn enters the promotion zone, right, this row, by capturing this pawn, which will go here, this pawn will be allowed to promote. It is hard to see on those pieces, but as you have a shogi piece, shogi pieces are flat. So if you turn it upside down, there will be a promoted side to it, which is sometimes red. When can you exactly promote? So as I said, if you enter the promotion zone, if you move your piece inside the promotion zone, you can promote. If your piece is already in the promotion zone and it moves inside, you can promote. And if your piece exits somehow promotion zone, you also can promote. So think of it, if you touch, if your piece somehow touches the zone, it can promote. The thing with the promotion is that you don't have to promote, but we will have some exceptions from the rule later on. All right, so let me quickly explain how pieces promote using the international pieces first. So we will have three groups of pieces, three types of promotions. One will be big pieces promotion, then small pieces promotion, then pieces that cannot promote. So big pieces, rook and bishop, will promote to dragons. So this is what we called dragon king, which is promoted rook. Rook. And this will be the dragon horse. which equals promoted bishop. It might be easy to recognize the dragon is a promoted rook because there is a drawing of a tower on which the dragon is sitting. So how does the promoted rook move like? It is exactly the same as before, but it will have an additional movement of diagonal. The way I remember it is like a rook plus king type of movement. Remember that diagonally it can move only one square. Promoted bishop will be very similar. The bishop moves diagonally and it will move one square horizontally and vertically. So bishop plus king. There is no actual way to remember the picture as being a bishop. Just be careful that the bishop promotes into the dragon horse. Maybe the bishop got lucky and got a horse or something like that. Okay, so big piece always promotes to the same piece plus the king. Now the small pieces will be the silver, knight, lance and pawn. This is how the promoted versions looks like. You can compare this silver with this silver, this knight with this knight and so on. And as you can see from the picture, this guy looks very similar to this guy. The top of the crown of the knight, the top of the lance and the top of the pawn is very similar to this guy. So you can already guess that um, they all move like gold general, like the big brother. All of those pieces want to become the big brother, the gold general. And finally, we have two pieces that cannot promote, which is the gold general, because, well, think of it, he's already gold, so he doesn't have to improve. And naturally, the king cannot promote. In the real shaggy set that you will have, if you will try to turn the gold to the other side, you will see that there is nothing behind. The kanji pieces might be a little bit challenging to remember, but there is also a trick to do so. 
So I will just explain it once again. Those light pieces, pawn, lance, knight, silver, promote to gold, and the big pieces gain the movement of the king. Those two pieces, the king, the generals, golden generals cannot promote. So how do I remember the promoted pieces? First of all, the promoted pieces are easily identified because they are red. And then we can start with the horse. The kanji for horse looks like this. And it basically shows you the picture of a horse with four legs and a tail over here. The kanji for the dragon king. There are different variations of the kanji. For example, this one is the written version. And this one as well has some similarities, but what I would like you to concentrate on is this tail part, or the hat part. Think of it as a wizard dragon, he has a wizard head on top of his head. So here you can concentrate either on the tail here, or on the hat part here. Or basically you can think, if there is a very complicated kanji, that's, it is highly possible that's the promoted rook, the dragon king. If it has four legs, that's most likely the horse. Okay, the light promoted pieces, those, those are actually the derivatives of this kanji. So again, you can see some similarities. Silver general will have a head, and he will have those kind of pluses signs. And as the piece grows weaker, they will have less complicated kanji. So the knight will have this kind of jumping line. Let me draw it again here. The knight will look kind of like jumping. The lance, since it's incense, it will look exactly like an incense right now. And the pawn, this is actually hiragana for Japanese to, it's an alphabet. But since it's red and it's so cute, I like to imagine that it's a red apple. So get a lot of those guys because they are quite valuable. So two more things about promotion. There might be a case where you jump with your knight to your opponent's camp, for example here, and you would like to keep the possibility of forking those two pieces. So when you enter the camp, or you touch the camp in any way, you have option to decide, promote or not. But as you can notice, if your knight jumps to the last row, if it still will be the same knight, it won't be able to move anymore. So this is the moment where the promotion needs to be done. So again, it applies to three pieces that can go forward, pawns, knights and lands. The lands has to be promoted on the last row, the same for pawn, and the knights has to be promoted on those two rows. Now the last rule, combination of the drop rule and the promotion. If you take a promoted piece and it goes to your piece stand, the same piece will become unpromoted. So this promoted pawn, which we call by the way token, the token will become a pawn again. So it's your first real game hint. Because token can move like a gold, which means it's very strong. It's very good to exchange it for some other piece because as a result the opponent will get a weak pawn. All right, and here we have arrived at the very important part, illegal pawn drops. I especially made this one outside of the drop rule. It's so important to remember. Let's say you have a lot of pawns in hand and you put one in front of another, and then you put one in front of another and one in front of another, which will make this amazing wall of pawns because each of the pawns will be protecting each other. So in order to not make this crazy situation, there is a rule that in one column you can have only one pawn. So for example, here there are no pawns, so you would be able to drop the pawn in that column on any square apart from the last row, right? Now if you would drop the pawn on this row, you would think that you can drop it, but if you look carefully, there's already pawn, which means all those squares are illegal. If you would drop it by mistake, that would be an illegal move that loses the game. 
and that kind of illegal miss, uh, move is called nifu. Ni meaning to, fu meaning pawn. And if you ever join any shogi community, you will often hear this word, or you will hear people complaining, oh no, I did nifu. Ah. So try to avoid it. Try to, before you drop a pawn, always check the column up until the bottom line because sometimes there is a pawn waiting for you there. So it, the rule doesn't apply to promoted pawns. Still, if there is a promoted pawn on this file, you are allowed to have a pawn in this column. So there is one more illegal move that you can make with a pawn drop, which is called Uchifuzume. I mentioned the word sume before, it means checkmate. Fu meaning pawn, as we know from Nifu, and Uchi meaning drop. Basically, it means you cannot win the game with a pawn drop. Pawn push is okay, pawn drop is not. So this is an example. The promoted pawn, the talking, moves like this, which means it limits this king's movement, right? The king cannot escape onto the squares, right? This king. Now the king also cannot walk here because there is his lens on the way. The lens, by the way, goes like this. If you were to drop the pawn to here, you will see the king is checkmated by pawn attacking the king square. And even though it looks like win because it's a checkmate, you lose because it's a pawn drop checkmate. So be careful about pawn drop checkmate as well. Well, all that's left for me to explain is how the pieces are set up on the initial board. This row is pawns, bishop on the left, rook on the right, then you have the king, gold on the left, gold on the right, silver on the left, silver on the right, knight on the left, knight on the right, and in the corners you have lances. So it's quite a symmetrical position. Black is first to move, and the objective is to capture the opponent's king before your king is captured. Now I will explain the same thing on the kanji set. Those are pawns. This is the bishop, this is the rook. The king is here. Those are golden generals, silvers, knights, and lances. Just some hints for your first game. Uh, the rook cannot jump on top of the pawn. So it means you have to actually push this pawn in order to slowly activate the rook. Shogi is a very slow paced game in the beginning. In the beginning you try to castle your king on the opposite side of the rook and build up your attack using silver, bishop, rook and those pieces here. Also pawns. In the end game, because pieces come into hand, everything becomes crazy and good luck. <laughs> so some additional rules for the game. There are two types of draws you can make. One is by repetition. The other is quite complicated. It's called entering king. Repetition means that you play the same move, for example, move the rook, move the rook, and then go back, go back. You play the same moves, uh, both sides, in repetition. If you repeat the same position, including the pieces in hand four times, it's a draw. The game is repeated. Entering king, I'm not gonna explain in, in this video. It's a special situation when both of the kings somehow migrated to <laughs> opponent's side. And because there are so many pieces that attack forward, it's hard to checkmate, so there is a special rule where you actually count points. But it's very rare, and as a beginner it it almost never happens. By the way, special rule for chess players, the stalemate doesn't exist in Shogi. Stalemate equals win uh, because you are forced to move the king under the check. So the side with only the king is going to lose. One more thing about repetition. It's also very weird rule in shogi, but in chess you can make infinite checks, right? You can check the king, the king runs, you check the king again, king comes back. In shogi, repetition with check is illegal. It's illegal. The side that forces 
the check loses. It's a very weird rule, but be careful. Alright guys, thank you for staying until the end of this video. If you would like to try Shogi, you can go to this website called 81 Dojo and go there by going to 81dojo.com. If you want to learn more about Shogi, you can visit my Twitch channel as well. I stream every week. It's the same name, Shogi Harbor. And if you would like to ask us a question outside the stream, you can post it under the video or join our Discord, which the link will be in the description of this video. So thank you so much and see you in the next video. Bye bye!